What do you want? You, Helen. Just you. It's done. No, there were no witnesses. It's about time you showed up. Where have you been? Jeff. Uh, why don't you relax? There's plenty of time. I'll fix you a drink. Vodka okay? Super. Jeff. Marty, I'm busy. This can't wait. You must be joking. Look, Jeff, I'm serious. Get rid of her. Get rid. Do me a favor, Marty. Get lost. Is anything wrong, Jeff? Uh, no, nothing. There's been a murder. About an hour ago, I saw it happen. Jeff. Oh. Um, I'll just top up my glass. What do you mean, you saw it? I was in the house. Well, what can I do? Get rid of her for a start and get the police out there. I saw the killer. If you move fast, they'll catch him. Um, Sandra, um, what would you say if I told you I had to go out? I think I'd rather write it down. There'll be other nights. Will there? Do you want a bet? Well, look at it this way. Uh, we've only known each other a few hours, and before we just rush into anything, we should think it over. All right, then, Jeff. You think things over, and then drop dead. Inspector, it's Randall, Jeff Randall. They uh, told me at the yard you'd gone home. Randall? Did they also tell you that I plan to sleep for at least 12 hours? I'm working on a case I know you'd be interested in. Randall, at the moment, there's only one case I would willingly handle. Murder. Your murder. 
How about someone else's? When? You are sure this is the house? Positive. And you think his name was Howarth? That's what the killer called him. I'm certain he lived here. It all sounds very vague to me. Why didn't you grab the killer, or at least follow him? Come on! You don't expect anyone to be at home, do you? Listen, we do it by the book, Randall, just in case. Yes? Inspector Clayton, New Scotland Yard. May I come in? Yes, of course. Jeff. It happened over there. Howarth got as far as that door, then the killer shot him. Uh, your name is Howarth? Yes. Karen Howarth. Now, what's this all about, Inspector? I've been given certain information that makes it necessary for me to see your husband. But he's in bed. Asleep. Can't it wait till a more civilized hour? She's lying. And I suppose he's a very deep sleeper. Very. I don't intend waking him up. He gets little enough sleep as it is. Well, he's going to get plenty from now on. You're in on this, aren't you, Mrs? Just what is going on here, Karen? He was killed, Jeff. I don't understand it. Your husband? Of course it's my husband. Well, Randall, will you make the introductions or shall I? Mr. Howarth? Yes. It's him, all right, Jeff. It's the man I saw murdered less than an hour ago. It seems there's been some mistake. I'm in no mood for jokes. Well, it wasn't my fault. It was your murder. They were too smart for us, that's all. All? Marty, there was no murder. You made a mistake. I stood and watched Howarth shot down. And I stood and watched Howarth threaten to sue me. Jeff, I know it looks crazy, but at least try and find a motive. I mean, who is this Howarth? What does he do? He's a perfectly respectable civil servant. I checked, so just forget about it, eh? What branch of the civil service? Whitehall? Ministry of Defense? He's one of the Bowler Hat Brigade. He's not MI5, he's not DI6, he's not the FO or anything else. But suppose he was. He's alive. That's all I need to know. Well... Well, I'm not satisfied. Nobody goes to all that trouble for nothing. It was obviously well planned. Well, what else can I do? You can go and see Mrs. Howarth again. But she's had aesthetics. Not if you started by apologizing. Not a chance. Jeff! No! Randall, I thought you were told to stay away from here. I had to come, Mrs. Howarth. I felt I must apologize for my incredible behavior last night. Very well. May I? Won't you sit down, Mr. Randall? Thank you. Uh, the fact is, Mrs. Howarth, my conduct last night was inexcusable. Go on. You're doing great, Jeff. Great. Find out what her husband did. I'll take a look around. Well, Mr. Randall? Uh, yes. <clears throat> I received certain information which uh, led me to believe that your husband's life was in danger. In which way? I believe he holds an important post in the civil service. He's a head of a department, that's all. A security department? No, he's senior bookkeeper at the Treasury. The Treasury? I failed to see what that has to do with last night. Oh, well, that's it, exactly. Uh, you see, I had the wrong man, not your husband at all. Uh, but I had to make sure. A pity you didn't find out before you came. <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
I'll give your apologies to my husband. Yes. Uh, perhaps I should wait. You won't be long, I suppose. That won't be necessary. Jeff, wait! The man who killed Howarth. He's here now. Good day, Mr. Randall. He's in the study, Jeff. I think I will wait. After all, I can't just leave without apologizing in person. I said it didn't matter. Oh, don't worry. I'll keep out of your way. Where's the study down Mr. here? Mr. Randall, how dare you? I only said I'd wait in the study. Is somebody already in there? Don't be ridiculous. I told you to leave. You've got to go in, Jeff. He's in there, all right. Come on. Well, if I can't stay, may I use the phone? No, you can't. And don't go in there. I wonder who it is you don't want me to see, Mrs. Howard. You've done it again, Marty. Jeff, he was in here. He was. I saw him, and he couldn't have left. You won't get away with this, Randall. Not this time. Thanks a lot, Marty. Thanks a lot. Good coffee, Randall? No, thanks. Cigarette? How about some sandwiches? I'm all right. I'd hate to think I was getting privileged treatment. For you, Randall, it's a pleasure. What are the facts, then? You break into this poor woman's home. Defy all her orders to leave. Utter libelous remarks. Assault her, causing great mental anguish. Then proceed to force your way into the privacy of the study, committing further assaults with intent on the way. I had no idea I was so busy. You see now. Six, two, four. That's splendid, Randall. A total of at least 18 years. Only if you're judging the case. Possibly, possibly. Sign at the bottom. The only statement I'm going to sign, Inspector, is the one that says I called on Mrs. Howarth to apologize for last night. She misunderstood my interest in her husband and got upset when I asked to use the phone. You're being difficult, Randall. You drop the charges and I won't sue for false arrest. All right, now let's go over it again, shall we? Yes, yes, Clayton here. Yes, sir. Yes, he's here now, sir. Yes, James Howarth, his wife, made the complaint. Yes, of course, sir. Yes, I understand, sir. Trouble, Inspector? Get out, Randall. What about the charges? There aren't any. Better luck next time. Out! late. Yes. Thanks to you. Me? Why? Where's Rawlins? He's in the study. He's not. Nothing's gone wrong. Not unless you call two hours with a special branch going wrong. Oh, no. What happened? Did they suspect anything? Oh, don't panic. Rollins! Yep. What were you up to today? I'm not with you. She telephoned Scotland Yard about Randall, didn't she? Well, what did you expect? He practically forced his way in here. And so the special branch spent two hours asking me why. What's it got to do with you? Look, I'm classified, aren't I? Any trouble of any kind and the security boys move in. I didn't think of that. I just wanted to get rid of him. And you nearly got rid of me. Suppose they'd done a routine check. Medical, fingerprints, handwriting. I wouldn't have stood a chance. Did they suspect anything? No. But we'll have to speed up the schedule. I'm about halfway through. If I can't get the rest by the weekend, we'll go without it. They won't like that at home. Maybe not. But they haven't got two bodies in the basement. Bodies? Huh? <gasps>
Jeff, I found them. Them? The Howards. They're both dead in the basement. I don't want to know, Marty. But it explains everything. Why the woman was covering up, why she called the police. I don't care if it explains why the Marie Celeste was abandoned by all hands in a calm sea. I still don't want to know. But you've got to help. All I've got to do is get some sleep. Well, that's marvellous, isn't it? That's fantastic. That's great. I cracked the case and you don't want to know. What sort of partnership have we got? A posthumous one, not recognised by law. Don't quibble. This is the biggest case you'll ever have. It's also on the verge of costing me my licence. Jeff? Jeff, we've been friends for a long time now, haven't we? I came to your funeral, didn't I? Yes. You've always trusted my judgment. Even when it seemed impossible, you've always backed me up. Once or twice. Then at least listen to me. Let me tell you what I found out. All right, Marty. Tell me a bedtime story. Well, for starters, Howarth is doing a top-secret job. But the real one is dead, and his wife. The two we saw are imposters. They're just keeping up appearances while they operate as spies. And it's all happening in the basement? Yeah, all the proof you need. Come on, let's have a look at these bodies and get out of here. This way. Mind the rubbish. Don't worry about me. They're over there on the table. On the table? Yes, they're both... But they were here! Oh, yes, they were here. But when you left, Marty, they got up and went upstairs to bed. They must have moved them. That's it. One of them said the special branch might get curious. You never give up, do you? Now all your story needs is the FBI and we can sell tickets. The study. Take a look in the dark room. The stuff they've got up there. They can't have shifted all that. Oh, no. They can't have shifted all that. They've been too busy slapping bodies up and downstairs. him clearly. It must have been him. It's a good job we moved those bodies. Where did you put them? Yeah. That means he still hasn't got any proof. Then I'd better make sure he doesn't try again. Oh, there's an easier way. Karen, phone the police. Say you found him in the study. What? But you said... Oh, I know what I said, but the situation's changed. If we play our cards right, the police will do the job for us. And no more questions. Marty? Marty, can you hear me? I need an alibi. I'm in real trouble this time. I need an alibi, fast! Um. Hello? Jeff? it is. Teeny, just listen. You've got ten minutes to get over to my place. Don't waste a second. But I'm not even dressed. That's the way I want you. Jeff Randall, are you drunk? Teeny, please do as I ask. If you don't get over to my place, I'll get ten years.
Yes? It's me, it's Jean. All right, start talking and it'd better be good. It is. Get into bed. That is not a good reason. Look, you're as bad as... As who? Never mind. Listen, Jeannie. Unless you can convince Inspector Clayton that we've been here all night, I'm in dead trouble. Oh, no. What have you done now? Or shouldn't I ask? It's what I'm supposed to have done. That's the problem. Well, Jeannie? It's the law, Jeff. Uh, uh, yeah, I know, that... Put him up. Randall? That's right. Arrest him. That's my wife. I can explain. Can you, Randall? I warn you, anything you say will be taken down and may be used in... Inspector, what are you talking about? Don't interrupt. You can thank your lucky stars you're not dead. Because if you were, I'd... I told you I can explain. I know you did. Breaking into the Howarths half an hour ago. That's right. And if he was, then he... She's your alibi. Inspector, I haven't been near the Howarths. Randall. Randall. You're spoiling it for me. I want tonight to be one of those moments that will stay with you for a long time. You were seen. Attempted robbery. You haven't a leg to stand on. That's what you said this afternoon, Inspector. But you changed your mind. Yes, the special branch phoned to say he'd withdrawn the complaint. But now he realizes how wrong he was. We're going to throw the book at you, Randall! Mm, Jeff, what is it? Oh, Inspector! Good evening, Mrs. Uh, Hopkirk. Now, let's talk calmly about this, Inspector. I'm a private investigator, not a crook. And uh, I certainly wouldn't be breaking into the house tonight. How would I? All right, Randall. Oh, Randall? Hmm. If I thought for one moment that you... Thought what, Inspector? Nothing. Jeannie, I'm sorry I thought that. I mean, well, it was such a shock seeing you lying there and, and Jeff. Good night, Inspector. And where do you think you're going? Get out! You're sure about this, Rollins? Look, I saw Randall go out this morning. Carl will be here any minute to pick me up. What if the special branch want to ask more questions? We can't fool them forever. Look, I know that. The question is, why was Randall released? Does it matter? The chances are that Scotland Yard will do a report in the normal way and pass it on to the special branch tomorrow. You will get the rest of the stuff today. But still Randall. What if he shows up? We can't afford that, can we? No, we can't, can we? Take care of it. Oh, there's the car now. Don't waste any time. Don't worry. I won't. Jeff. Randall and Hobkirk. Uh, no, Mr. Randall isn't here. Oh, well, I should think in about, um, half an hour. 
Can I take your name? And I... Randall will be back in about half an hour. Randall, detective. Problem with ghosts. Uh, that's right. Play it. We spoke on the telephone. Won't you sit down? Thank you. Uh, I understand you're well acquainted with ghosts. There are a few ethereal manifestations of which I have not had personal experience. Oh, good. Then you're just the man I want. Yours to command, Mr. Randall. What I need to know is, do ghosts always tell the truth? I mean, are they trustworthy? Interesting question. You suspect a ghost of telling you lies? I'm acting for a client. Oh, yes, 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 of course. Well, now, theoretically speaking, it's impossible for a ghost to tell a lie. and No motive, you understand, and even less incentive. Yes, I can see that. Uh, but can they be mistaken? How can a ghost know what is true or false? I'm not with you, Professor. It stands to reason. Ghosts exist in a fantasy world, Mr. Randall, a world that is neither here nor there. A world dominated by their own repressions, populated by figments of their own imaginations. What is true to a ghost could be quite the reverse to us. I see. Figments of their imagination. Pure fantasy. So they have hallucinations? All the time, Mr. Randall. All the time. Take my word for it. Never trust a ghost. Never trust a ghost. Have I had a job finding you? Where have you been? Well, no in particular. Why didn't you wait at the office? There isn't time. Listen, Jeff, I've been at the Howards. They're finishing off the job today, and they can't afford to have you running around loose. So, they're going to kill you. Oh, really? It's a bit drastic, isn't it? Drastic? It's more than that. It's fatal. Try not to worry about it, Marty. What are you talking about? They've already murdered the two Howards. You've got to go into hiding. Yeah, OK, I'll think about it. Think about it? Look, Marty, why don't you try and take things easy? Jeff, who did you see this morning? You don't believe me, do you? Listen, Jeff, I am serious. If you don't do something, we'll be shaking hands tonight. That'd be dead funny, won't it? Jeff, you've got to be careful. I sat and heard them plan to kill you. You've got to listen to me, Jeff. They could be waiting for you up in the office right now. All right, Marty, you go and check. How's that? It's all clear at the moment. Hallucinations. What was that, Jeff? Nothing. Now will you believe me? The main thing is to convince Inspector Clayton. You can't go against this crowd on your own. Shh. Hey? She can't hear me. Hmm. Huh? Time to go home. Oh, it is? Mm. Well, it's only 3.30. Jeannie, I've kept you up half the night. I ruined your reputation. The least I can do is give you the rest of the day off. Well, put it that way. Thanks very much. Jean, I do appreciate what you did last night, love. I could have been in a very nasty spot. Yes, well, just don't make a habit of it, huh? In fact, don't even consider making a habit of it. 
Marty, do you think they'll try again? They're bound to, Jeff. They're bound to. You're the only one who can put the finger on them. Right. You get over the house. Try and find out how. And you? I think I'll give Inspector Clayton a large dose of indigestion. Yes. Clayton here. Randall, the answer is no. I just wanted some friendly advice. Then ask a friend. You see, Inspector, someone's trying to kill me. I'll not rest until I've found your killer and shaken his hand. All I need is information about Howarth. Now, look, Randall. If you go near that house again, so help me. I want to know why his work is classified. It isn't. Then check it again, this time with a special branch. I'd hate to be killed without knowing why. You're serious about this, Randall? Deadly serious. All right, leave it with me. I'll call you later. Thanks a lot, Inspector. Come in. Mr. Randall? That's right. What can I do for you? I understand you carry out uh, private investigations. Yes, what kind of inquiry do you have in mind, Mr...? Smith. James Wentworth Smith. Would you like to sit down? Thank you. The address? Nine. Marin Close. Westminster. There was nothing doing at the house, Jeff. I couldn't find... Now, Jeff. Take it easy. Don't panic. This is Rawlins. I see. Perhaps you'd like to tell me some more about the case, Mr. Smith. Yes, of course. Be careful, Jeff. He's got a gun. Relax. Play it cool. Laugh a little. It's about my wife, actually. Uh, she's involved with another man. His name wouldn't be Rawlings, would it? Well done, Jeff. You've got him. Right then, Randall. Let's see what you really can do. Ah! Watch it, Jeff. It looks like he knows what he's doing. here by now. You don't think... Don't be so stupid. If the cover's been blown, we'd know all about it. The hard way. That'd be him now. All of it. Every last one. Excellent. Any problems? None. Got the tickets. We leave at midnight. Thank goodness for that. I'd better get moving with these. Oh, by the way, uh, we have a guest. Why didn't you kill him? Because I had a better idea. He is a perfect suspect for murder. Oh, yes, very good. We'll bring the bodies in here. Jeff, you've come round. Where have you been? Try to find a way of getting you out. Inspector Clayton. Right, but how do I persuade him? Anyway, I don't think they're going to hang round here much longer, Jeff. It doesn't look too good. Thanks. We must be able to do something. Can't you think of anyone I can reach? No, no. Dr. Plevitt. Who? Who? Dr. Plevitt. Who's he? Uh, an expert in psychic manifestation. A very good friend of mine. I often visit his room at the British Museum. Psychic manifestations? Uh, yes, ghosts. I've just realized I'll be able to help him in his work, communicating with the other side. <laughs> You're a cool one. <laughs> Thanks, Jeff.
dear Tep, how nice of you to call. You can see me? Perfectly. But don't be alarmed. I'm very friendly. Marvellous. Now listen. I want you to call Inspector Clayton at New Scotland Yard and tell him to get round to the Howards right away. There's going to be a murder. He'll understand. Well done. Perfect. Oh, come on! My dear fellow, you're obviously quite new to this haunting business. What's that got to do with it? Everything, everything. Now, what you have to understand is that you now exist in a dream world. Until you move on to the next phase of your existence, everything will be slightly distorted, a fantasy. Look, will you just make the phone call? Now, we don't want to bother Scotland Yard with your little nightmare, do we? Nightmare? You're talking through the back of your head. My dear fellow, you must take my word for it. I am fully qualified, you know. Not half as qualified as I am. Well, let's not argue about it. You've obviously adjusted very well. A little overconfident, perhaps, but still. Will you make that call? Please, we mustn't get excited. And another thing, I am not living in a dream world. Yeah, what can I do to convince you that it's all in your imagination? What can I do to convince you to make that call? Tests. Tests? Yes. You take my tests and you'll see that I'm right. It looks good. You must have got 20 pages. Yes, I was lucky. I found an error. He was able to keep the books for most of the afternoon. I had no idea our balance of payments crisis was so secret. <laughs> the information there is worth more than your national debt, Randall. What's so important about pay sheet? Unless, of course, you're secret agents for the Inland Revenue. <laughs> you still don't know who the real Howarth was, do you? He was in charge of salaries for DI-5 and every other department of intelligence. What we have here, Randall, are the names of every undercover agent employed by this country. Names, status, and zone of operations. I see. Bottom left-hand corner. Bottom right-hand corner. In the middle, the center. Top left-hand corner, top right-hand corner. I'm quicker than you are. This is ridiculous. Yes, that should do it. They'll assume she was trying to reach the door when Randall shot her. Where will Randall be? I think we'll have him by the fireplace. One clean shot in the temple. Suicide. They'll never believe it. They may not understand it, but they'll have to believe what they see. Hot. Cold. Up. Down. Wife. Husband. Knife. Fork. Day. Night. Me. You. Big. Small. Remarkable. Fantastic. Got everything together, Rollins? Yes. Karen? Better get ready. All right. was successful. No doubt we shall repeat the technique. A butterfly. A star. A man's head. A cat. Absolutely astonishing. 
You got every test right. Perfect. Of course I did. Now are you convinced that I'm not in a dream world, that I don't have hallucinations? Yes, but... but you're a ghost. A remarkable ghost. You certainly are. Look, will you please stop messing about and phone Scotland Yard? Let's get to the airport. Randall, time for you to depart. Time, then? Just about. How did you get on? Terrible. Terrible. I shouldn't bother with that Dr. Plevit if I were you. He's, he's living in a world of his own. All right, Randall. Now, what's been going on? Ah, uh, well, this one here and that one there were murdered by that one over there. These two over here were impersonating those two over there. And this one. And there's another body outside in the cupboard, Jeff. And there's another body outside in the cupboard. Where? Show me. Sorry, Jeff. Marty. I must have had an hallucination. Sorry, Inspector. A hallucination? 